Welcome to part 4 in this series of tutorial videos for new members of the Goon Swan Federation Alliance. In this video we'll take a quick look at how you can get into fleet PvP and what this involves. Doctrines are very important for fleet PvP. Almost every serious fleet has a specific doctrine that its members are supposed to use. Each doctrine has a set of ships that are accepted in that doctrine plus a target fleet composition. For example, here you can see the composition for Harpy Fleet. A full Harpy Fleet needs about 140 Harpies, 35 Bursts, 25 Interceptors, 25 Interdictors, and 25 Support Ships. This is what the FC wants people to bring. So when you see a broadcast for Harpy Fleet, know that you can bring essentially any of these ships. Don't worry so much about what the FC needs or wants, just bring whatever you want. If the FC really needs some different ships, for example, maybe he has too many harpies and needs more bursts and phantoms, then he will inform you during form up. But if you just see a fleet notification and it says harpy fleet, just bring whatever you want out of this list. Of course, if you are very new and cannot actually fly any of these ships, feel free to bring whatever you want. The free frigates handed out in the GS Frigates channel are just perfect for almost any fleet if you cannot fly any Doctrine ships. It helps to familiarize yourself with all the Doctrines and to figure out one ship for every Doctrine that you can bring so you don't have to spend any time looking for a ship when the Doctrine is called. There are some fleets that do not use a pre-prepared Doctrine. For those, the ship types will be listed in the fleet notification. Yet again, there are fleets that use the Kitchen Sink Doctrine, quote-unquote. Kitchen Sink means bring anything you want, literally anything. Kitchen sink is never used for serious fleets and generally indicates that the FC doesn't know what he's doing. If you one day start running your own fleets, make sure to always use proper doctrines because kitchen sink is a recipe for disaster. Note that doctrines can and do change from time to time. Because of that, I will not give an overview of doctrines in this video since it may be out of date by the time you watch it. So always ask in the Little Beast channel for any up to date advice. Alright, so assuming you have your ships prepared, maybe it's one of those free frigates, maybe it's a doctrine ship, whatever. Now how do you join a fleet? First, you need to wait until you get a fleet notification on Jabber. Oh hey, looks like there's a fleet going out. Let's take a look at what the broadcast says. As you can see in the beginning, it says the FC name. This is just how you recognize the right fleet when you are in-game. You will look for the fleet that is led by this FC. And the fleet name is also here. These two options can help you find the fleet in-game. Form-up location is Yao. This is where most of our peacetime fleets live. Reimbursement is listed as strategic here. Um, that's a mistake. It's actually peacetime. There are no strategic roams. And we see that comms are in channel 11. All right, what ships are here? Caracal fleet. Now, if you look in the forums, there is no doctrine called Caracal fleet. This is a completely unofficial doctrine often used by FCs. It just means make a caracal that satisfies the FC. If you're lucky, he will give you a fit in the fleet channel. If not, you'll have to ask others in the fleet. And that's about it. Now I can fly a caracal on my main character. So I'm going to join this fleet in a caracal and let's see how these things work. The first thing to do is join voice comms. This was channel 11, so under ops, let's go into channel 11. There we go, now we are in the fleet comms. Let's now switch in-game and actually join the fleet in the game. To do this, you can open your fleet window, which you can find in the menu, social, and fleet. And in the fleet finder, you will see, okay, it's the first fleet by Black Sky called Roaming for Content. Just right click and join fleet, and that's how you get into the fleet. Make sure you have the fleet chat open. Read the MOTD, it usually says everything important about the fleet. If you don't have any of these ships, an easy thing to do is to look in the contracts. Commonly used ships are often found for sale on contracts. Go to Menu, Business and Contracts. And under Available Contracts, let's search for Caracals in the current station. And Availability should be Public. There we go, there are five Caracals available. So you can just open one of these contracts and accept it if you want to buy one. I believe I actually have a Caracal though. There we go. SV Caracal is its name. Let's jump into it. 
Let's open the fitting screen. Yep, everything looks in order. Let's load the guns. You notice I have different types of ammo here. The FC will usually tell you what ammo to use, but if he doesn't, feel free to always ask. You can ask anything in fleet chat. Voice comms are preferably for more important things, not for random questions, but while the fleet is forming, feel free to use voice comms if freely. And of course, make sure your ship is insured before you leave on the fleet. There we go. I am now ready to undock and waiting for the FC's orders on comms. All right, guys, I can use a couple Ospreys. So if a couple few people have like one or two, honestly, two or three Ospreys, two or three Ospreys. If anyone have them, let me know. I need Lodgy. I don't have any Lodgy right now, guys. So I need either Ospreys or if you have Scythe Spring Dead. And that's how the FC asks for more ships if he's missing some of a specific type. As you recall, each Doctrine has a dedicated amount of every ship that he needs. You usually want some of each, depending on Doctrine, different amounts. The FC has a window on his screen that shows what ship everyone is in, so he can check if he has the right mix. Now for most fleets, you want to keep the fleet window open and on the History tab. This will show any broadcasts from the FC. He will usually broadcast the target that he wants you to shoot. Depending on what ship you are in, this may of course not be relevant to you. If you are flying a newbie frigate, you should just be tackling something that's nearby and keeping it in place. And of course some Doctrine ships are not meant to shoot the primary, but to do other things. But I will not cover what the special roles are in this series of videos. It is also useful to add the FC with Black Sky to your watch list. You can right click and add to watch list. This means you can easily right click him and either orbit him or warp to him or do anything that he requests of you. Yep, yep. Guys, go ahead and go ahead and undock. Go ahead and undock now. It's 1921, so we're leaving. During the fleet, just do what the FC tells you to do. Think of it as the FC moving his arms around and you are the hand and fingers. Go where he tells you to, follow his orders, and if you are in a position to shoot and tackle things, and assuming the FC actually wants you to shoot and tackle things, then go ahead and do so. There you go, the FC is now warping us to the next gate. Not every FC warps the fleet, sometimes he will tell you to warp yourself. Just follow orders and that's about it. Roger that fleet, jump to our attack on contact. Jump to our attack on contact, I'm linking Desto, I'm linking Desto. Jump on contact simply means when you land on the gate, jump immediately. Normally you're not allowed to jump at all unless the FC tells you to do. Jumping without the FC's orders is a bad thing. Now you see the FC linked a destination in the fleet chat. He will simply do this if he wants you to know where to go. And usually you should automatically align the outgate whenever you end up in a system and you have the destination. There you see he's warping us again. And he has not said to jump on contact right now, so we're going to hold. By default, you will always hold on every gate, even if you have a destination. Roger that. Fleet jump on contact. Fleet jump on contact. There you go. We can jump uh, now. Scout, go ahead and plus one to DO6H. Fleet just align to DO. Well, yep, y'all two just keep your cap chain. I don't know where everyone went. I guess he just deuced out. Guys, warp to DO6H and hold. No, he told us we to warp ourselves. Careful, so be ready to warp out if you get primary. When you are in warp, you can always select the jump option as well, and your ship will automatically jump at the end of the warp. If we're going to jump OTAC C, warp 01Y gate, hold, gate is red, 01Y gate is red. Red and green are often used to signify whether you can or cannot jump through a gate. Red obviously means no jumping, green means go ahead and jump whenever you touch the gate. If you're ever uncertain of whether you click jump or warp, just hit control space, until you see this please wait sign. This will cancel any jump order and still allow you to complete the warp. Now you see in fleet chat someone asked who is anchor. Usually DPS ships will orbit the anchor and the anchor is usually the FC. So you always orbit the FC at 5000 meters unless he says something different. This is of course when you are not traveling. Okay if we fleet align, align sun now, align sun now, fleet align sun now, MWD's on. MWD's on two cycles, line sun. The FC will tell you when you need to use your MWD if you are in a microwave drive ship. Now the enemy fleet is in the other side of this gate, so 
We're currently holding range, so we can shoot Save them if they warp in. Get on the gate real quick, bubble, and then come back towards me. Yes, sir. All right. Do this now. If you see a fucking local spike, turn your ass right back around and warp out. Ospreys, get on your anchor, please. Guys, anchor up on Black Sky. Post your MWDs one cycle. One cycle only. And here you see he broadcast the primary. That means control click and shoot. Hardeners, any shield or damage control modules. If you're told to use MWDs for one cycle, that means turn it on and immediately off so it goes red as soon as it's activated. He's almost dead. Guys, the Drake is secondary. The Drake is secondary. Come on, overheat your missiles. Okay, guys, primary's down Drake. Primary's down Drake. Burn it, uh, anchor up on Black Sky. MW's on one cycle. Okay, he's jumping in, guys. Reload your weapons. Reload your weapons. Approach the gate. I want to approach the gate. I want to approach the gate. Once an engagement is over, you can hit the clear history button just to have a clear picture. Guys, as soon as you land, align planet one. As soon as you land on Sway, align planet one. So the FC told us to align planet one. This means just um, right-click in space, find planet one, and hit align two. That's the easiest way to do it. Someone else also broadcasted it for convenience. You can align from here as well. So this is basically what fleet PvP looks like. We follow FC's orders. He gets you into a fight, then you shoot things. Otherwise, you travel around where he tells you to. It's pretty simple and straightforward. You should always have your damage control turned on. The other defensive modules you may want to keep turned off unless there's an actual need for them, unless you're in battle, because they use capacitor. The damage control does not really use capacitor, so it's not a big deal. Hold on this kill, guys. Just If you're going to have to shoot it, just fire one gun at it. E-war if you can. Fleet, align to uh, E-Tac-Z. Align to E-Tac-Z as soon as you kill him. So the reason for only using one gun and Ewar, Ewar just means anything that doesn't actually damage him, just uh, stops him from warping or such things. The reason for doing this is simply because people are whores, they like having their kill board full of lots of kills, and so if everyone gets on the kill, well, it's on everyone's kill mail. We're currently holding on this gate because we just killed the scythe, and of course this means we have an aggression timer. We cannot jump for a minute, just waiting out this timer. When fleets are heading back home, there are many lemmings, people who don't listen to the FC and keep jumping in. This is an easy way to get yourself killed at the end of a fleet. Alternatively, you may miss out on some kills that happen when the fleet happens to catch something. So never run ahead unless the FC actually tells you to free burn. That is a very bad habit that some people have, and it will just cause themselves some misery. Set that as Desto Scout, can you come back and uh, warp VRH gate and let me know if it's clear? I'm going to work on a PAP for y'all guys. Now, when the FC is talking about a PAP, that is a participation link. At the end of every fleet action, the FC will give you a link. All you need to do is click on that link, and it will count you as having taken part in this fleet. All right, when the FC gives you a PAP link, just click it. It will open an in-game browser. If it says you need trust, make sure to add it to your trusted sites list. You should add it like this, a dashboard.info slash asterisk. And it just says your participation was saved. This is the thing you want to see. Your corporation leadership will be very happy to see you participate. And that's it, really. Just close the browser window when it's registered. If we go warp CCP, tag US, and jump on contact, go and just free burn home, guys. I think we're good. When the FC says free burn, that just means get to your destination. Don't stop, no need to wait for further orders. Now, in this fleet, it looks like I made it home safely. This means I cannot ask for SRP, the ship reimbursement. However, I'm now going to show you a clip from another fleet where I died, and I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to get paid for dying. All right, I Do died there and got podded. This is a good opportunity to show you how to get SRP. Because if you die in a Doctrine ship, or really in most ships, you get paid for it. The first thing you need to do is to look at your loss mail. Here I have my Harpy and Capsule loss. Capsule 
losses are not reimbursed, but harpies definitely are. Open it up, and here you will want to copy external kill link. This is the link you will need to submit later to the SRP website. Let's now open the SRP website. The URL, as always, is in the video description. You log in here with your forum's username and your ESA password. In the SRP app, view payouts is what you can use to see what ships are reimbursable and for how much. It's fairly straightforward, nothing complicated here. Ship type, how much you get. Now I lost a ship. This crest link is the external kill link that I copied from in-game. Into this broadcast text box, you do not need to put anything to receive peacetime reimbursement, but if it is a strategic op, then you need to copy and paste the ping from Jabber into this box. I do not currently need to put anything in here because this was a peacetime op. Just to demonstrate how it should look for a strat op, I've copied the ping here. You can put it here for peacetime, but it's not required. So hit submit. And now it's pending. You can see it under my losses. And I will be reimbursed within a couple of days, usually. And that's it. This concludes this tutorial video about fleet PvP. You saw how you can get in the action, what you should do, and how you get paid if you lose a ship. Go and enjoy some fleets now. The next video will showcase some ship fitting techniques and teach you the principles of making useful ships.